everybody. Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Susan. This is my husband, Jim. And on our program, we always talk about some things in the Word of God that we believe are critical to your everyday Christian life. That's right. Every, it's every, it, and see, here's the thing about it. You and I talk about everyday Christian life. Every and people day. think, well, you know, those, those, everybody has an everyday Christian life. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true? That's right. I mean, we all get up eat our breakfast, take a shower, get dressed. I mean, it, it's just an everyday Christian life. Now, that's not saying, we're not saying it is an everyday boring life. Definitely not that. <laughs> it is an everyday Christian life, uh -huh. which means every day is exciting because we are following after the Lord. Yeah, and a lot of times we'll, we'll ask, you know, what do you mean by the bottom line? Why do you call your program that? because we believe that that's how you solve life's problems and pressures. The bottom line would be by using the, the Word, Word of God. God. And yeah. so that's, that's the, the whole synopsis of our program, what we do here. That's right. So, you know, here's the thing about it. You've got this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. I'm not talking about, you know, everybody has this problem or, or this problem yeah. or maybe this problem or maybe this problem. Well, <laughs> Well, and, and, and the, the, what happens is, is that we get overwhelmed. That's exactly what happens, yeah. But what you have to do is you have to go to this book right here, mm -hmm. and you find a scripture or two that addresses mm -hmm. the problem that you're having. That's right. That's what you and do. And you begin to meditate on it. You begin to confess it. You begin to say it. You begin to go over it. You, you rehearse it. You go over it, you rehearse it, and pretty soon, mm -hmm. it just seems like, well, yeah. out of nowhere, the problem is taken care of. That's right. That is what will happen. Yeah. It may take some time, but it will happen. That's right. So we started last week talking about fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in every, in every area, fundamentals are what what make you successful yeah. or not successful. Right. You know, if you, you, if you stop and think about it in sports, the team that have, have done the fundamentals mm -hmm. are the ones that are successful. That's right. You know, even, and if you think about it, even in the business world, mm -hmm. if you do the fundamentals, fundamentals, your business will be successful. Mm -hmm. You know, and Jim, just something as simple as handwriting. I remember teaching handwriting, you know, like to kids in first grade mm -hmm. and you know there's a starting place for each letter you know and if if they just miss that it's not going to be as good mm -hmm. you know it's just so basic and so fundamental you know and people just get tired they don't want to practice you know and on our previous program you talked about how you know the ones that are going to win the football game and the ones that are going to win the golf match, those are the ones that have put in the time and really, really worked on these fundamental, fundamental. Right. tasks of repetition of over and over of, of what, what it is that, that causes you to succeed. You know, like you said, it wasn't actually just the, um, you said like in baseball, if you ask the coach, he would say it was hitting, pitching and hitting. hitting and pitching. Well, you got to practice and practice, practice and that. practice right. to be good at that. And, you know, like, like in golf, you know, what actually is going to win is when you make that putt, right? right. Nobody likes to practice putting no, for hours right. and hours no. and hours. So, you know, but if you're going to be good at those things, if you're going to be on television playing those sports, you're going to have to practice all those fundamentals, right? That's right. Okay, well, in our everyday Christian life, we, Jim and I, just believe it's the same way. There are basic foundational truths that we must take to heart and appropriate in such a way that our life is just founded on the rock. That's right. You know, that, when the pressures come, the rock is right there. That reminds me of your favorite scripture in Deuteronomy. Yeah. Where uh, Moses said, uh, what was it? He said, you know, don't take these lightly because this is your yeah, life. Yeah, it's your life. And it truly is. If you can just ever get that concept, you know, into your heart that, the Word of God is where your life is. You know, and, and see, I, I used to be this way, and I bet you even were this way. I thought that the Bible was true, but it was only true for certain people. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it was true for preachers. 
mm-hmm. and for you know this, that, and other. But the you know what I found out? What did you find out? It's true for whosoever. Mm-hmm. You know, in Mark chapter eleven, Jesus, you know, Jesus said, "Curse the fig tree," mm-hmm. and it died. And when they came back, Peter was taken. <gasps> Look, Master, the tree is dead. And here's what Jesus said. He said, He said, Have faith, faith in God. God. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, but shall believe those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. I heard, I think it was Bob Yandy, it said it this way. He said, Whosoever, anybody can, everybody won't, somebody will. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's good. It's for whosoever. Mm-hmm. And it, what does it take? Believing. Mm-hmm. That's what it takes. You Believe know. Believe that what you say will come to pass, and it will. Mm-hmm. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, so today we're going to continue with. Uh, we're going to be talking about some fundamental truths. Yes. And uh, on our previous program, the one we talked about faith. That was really all we talked about. Was it? But, was, I mean, but go, let's go back to Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, it is impossible possible. to please God. In mm-hmm. other words, it doesn't make any difference what you do. If it's not by faith, it will not please God. Yeah. And we talked about how, how faith comes. It comes by hearing, hearing. and hearing by the, by the Word of God. And you know, today on our television, there are so many Christian programs. Absolutely, you can you can turn that on in the morning if you stay at home. You can hear something all day long. When, yeah, that's you right. You know, and that is really, really, that's a prudent thing to do. That's right. So if, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And you think, well, but see, I don't have any faith. Oh, yes, you do. If you are born again, mm-hmm. you've got it. The Bible says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. You got it. When you were born again, you got it. Mm-hmm. Now, the question is, what have you done or what will you do with what you got? Yeah. It's like muscles. If you don't use them, use them, then they're not going to grow. I know like, you know, you and I go to the gym on a regular basis. And I like uh, uh, when, on the days that when we do aerobic exercises. Mm-hmm. I like to do the arc trainer. Yes, you do. Okay. Well, when when we first started, I would have the arc trainer on level 15. Mm-hmm. And, and then at the end of 30 minutes, I was so tired, I couldn't didn't know which way was up or down or sideways mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Now, but because we've been doing it for several years, I can put that arc trainer on level 85. Mm-hmm. And I can do my 30 minutes. Wow. And I'm and I'm really no more tired than I was when we were when I had it on level 15. So you say, well, how's that possible? Well, I didn't jump from level 15 to level 85. Mm-hmm. I went from 15 to 20. Yeah. Did that for a while, got mm-hmm. comfortable with doing that, and then I moved up to 30. Mm-hmm. Did that for a while, got comfortable with it. And it's the same way with faith. You got to start somewhere. Right. And, you know, we, we ended our program last time talking about Peter and when he walked on the water. Mm-hmm. Now, y'all, nobody can walk on the water. Right? That's, right. That's impossible. And so here's the scripture, though. It's in Matthew chapter 14, verses 30 and 31. It says, when he saw, now this is talking about Peter. Remember, he's a fisherman, mm-hmm. okay, and he's out in this boat. And when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. Remember, he had just asked Jesus, he said, Jesus, he saw Jesus walking on the water. He said, that's you, tell me to come. And so Jesus said, come on. <laughs> so he just hopped right out of the boat and he was walking on the water just fine until he, be, he began to sink because he looked around and he saw the wind was boisterous. And that's what happens to us. We'll, we'll be walking in faith, trusting God is, is working and things are happening on to to cause success Mm -hmm. to come and then we take our eyes off the word and we begin to look around and we sink that's that's exactly what happens but it's a faith problem because jesus said at the end of it he said he stretched his hand out towards peter and he will to you too he's not going to let you sink and he said 
Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? That's right. Oh, That's yeah. Right. So, so the first fundamental <laughs> got to have faith. <laughs> is faith. You must have faith. Okay, right. right. All right. So today we're going to talk talk to y'all about hope. 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 Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna start with this scripture because I just really think this is good. This is in Hebrews and it's chapter six and it's verse nineteen. And this is the New Living Translation. It says, "This hope is a strong, trustworthy anchor for our soul." Now, see, this would have helped Peter that day. It would have. That's right. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our soul. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Jesus has already gone in there before us, and he has become our eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. But he's talking about hope being a strong, trustworthy anchor Thank for your soul. And you think about, just think about uh, the anchor, the size of an anchor it takes on these huge ocean liners, you know, just to to make them secure and steadfast when they're in a place where they're going to be still. I mean, it's it's huge. It's big. And he wants you to understand your hope is like that for you. Yes, it is. That's what it'll do yes, for it you. Right. W. Vines <clears throat> says that it involves the happy anticipation <clears throat> of good. Right. It's not wishful thinking or an insecure, I hope so. But it, Vine goes on to say this. It is a confident expectation. Confident expectation. Mm-hmm. Common definition of hope is desire plus expectation. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not, well, I hope so. That, that's not hope. No, that's not that's real hope. That's wishful thinking. Yeah. And, you know, you can look at this in, in Ephesians about hope because this is really good. It, it's talking about this confident hope in uh, it's chapter 1. <clears throat> and it's verse 8. He says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light. How would you get your heart flooded with light? How would you get your heart flooded with light? It would have to be open to receive. It would have to be open to receive, and and you would have to be exposed to the words of God, right? That's right. So anyway, he said, I pray that your heart be flooded with light so you can understand the confident hope he has given. Okay. You know, we talked about, uh, we talked about a great deal about faith. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. But in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, now faith, which we've been talking about, yeah. is the substance That's of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. See, hope is out here. Mm-hmm. Faith is now. And, you know, I think that's the verse that goes on and it says, no, it's where it's talking about faith perceives as real yep. fact what is not yet revealed to, to the, the senses. Sense. But, you know, and hope is a powerful Hope is a powerful thing. Mm-hmm. It will keep you motivated to keep going. Right. You know, um, you know, you can you can look at people sometimes, and and you see you you look at their face and you can say they've lost hope. Yep. You can you can you can, you can see it. It becomes visible. It sure does. So we're talking about having a confident hope. Right. That's based <clears throat> on what we have found. In the words of God, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. In Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Hold fast your confession hold fast. of hope. Don't change it. That's right. Don't change it. Well, well, what if it doesn't look like it? Don't change it. Yeah. Don't change it. That's right. So Keep when your confession of hope alive. Don't change it. And when it's when it's based on the words of God, it's it's out there. That's right. Don't change it. That's right. Why would you change it? The Bible says God's word never changes. Yeah, but you would change it because you start looking around. That's right. That's, That's right. why you would yeah. change. But, but don't, just don't do it. Mm-hmm. You got to have this happy anticipation of good. Right. That's what Bible hope is. That is what Bible hope is. That's Which exactly. makes it different than worldly hope. Yes. Yeah. Because worldly hope isn't really based on anything substantial. It's just like a, it's like a dream. It's like, oh well, I hope someday. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not really yeah. no, it's not. confident. It's just, it's just wishful thinking. But Bible hope is, is truth. It is. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Let's move on. 
Let's talk about another fundamental that we have to, to master is praise. Mm -hmm. Praise. And see, and that really goes along with faith and hope. All right. Mm -hmm. Psalm 146, verse 2. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's, that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. As long as I'm alive, I'm going to praise God. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty plain. He says, as long as you have your being, that's why you're living here on the earth. That's I mean, why that's you're right just, here. Yeah. So, you know, you think, well, uh, uh, sometimes it's just so hard to pray. And I agree with you. Sometimes it's just hard to do it. You know, in the Psalms, it talks about praise and it talks about how out of the mouth of babes, Maybe. children, you know, and I know that one time I was... Uh, Lamar Boschman did some things about praise and worship. Mm -hmm. And he talked about how when you enter into praise, when you actually are praising the Lord from your heart, he says it's as if your enemies are, are laying down at your feet. And it's, it's like they, they have no power over you then. He says you can actually, he says it's like, like you have broken their neck. You know, think about that. Can my praise be so powerful that my enemies... Or just destroy right there. Mm -hmm. You know, we read this book by Merlin Carruthers years and years ago. Remember, it was yeah. called Prison to Praise. And he unlocked this thing about praise. And, you know, this is just something like we talk about being an everyday Christian. We should have everyday praise in our everyday Christian life. Yeah. You know, th I mean, there, there should not a day go by. You know, I, I like to think about it like this. There's certain things that I do every day, mm -hmm. every day, you know, like for instance, every day I pray in tongues. Mm -hmm. I've done that every day every since day. I got filled with the Holy Spirit, which was yeah. 40 years ago. Yeah. So there has not been a day go by that I haven't done that. Mm -hmm. I just, I just do that. Yep. Every day I tell you that I love you. There is not a day goes by that yeah. I don't do that. Right? That's right. And I believe that every day I give you a head kiss. I think you do. Every day. It's just certain you, things. Yeah. Just certain things that you do. Well, it ought to be the same way. Every day we ought to praise God. Mm -hmm. There's something in your life that, that you, you can, can praise, praise God, God for. about. That's I true. Mean, you know, you things may may not be going like mm -hmm. you want them to go. Things may not be going like you thought they would go, but I <clears> promise <throat> you there's something there that we can praise God for. Mm -hmm. in, in Luke, it talks about uh, Jesus. It was like a parade that day. It was in chapter 19, verse 37. As he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. If you read this from some of the newer translations, it will tell you that the whole city was rocked. You know, yeah. like Jesus was the first rock star. You know, the whole city, the all the kids, all the old people, all the young people, the teenagers, everyone was affected by his entry that day. But it, it resulted from this praise that began when they, when he came into mm -hmm. their presence. That's right. That's right. So. So praise, praise is something we can do. Praise is powerful. It is powerful. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can praise it, praise God in spite of circumstances. That's right. That's mm -hmm. just something that we just need to do. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Let's talk about another one. Okay. Talk about righteousness. Okay. Now, some people don't understand. Some people think righteousness means holiness, but that's not what it means. What does righteousness mean? Righteous just means equity of character or action as a result of justification. All right. All right, there's some scriptures here. Romans uh, 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's he saying here when he says it's not eating and drinking? Uh, righteousness, the kingdom of God doesn't have to do with these natural things. Yeah, with material things, that's right. It's righteousness, peace, peace and, and joy, joy in the Holy Spirit. Right. All right, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he, 
made him, he, God, made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Yeah. Now, see, there's where a lot of people... Yeah, there's, there's a here's, mentality here's, there's, out there's there. There's a mentality there. Mm -hmm. You see, people think, well, you know, I'm not worthy. According to what, he, according to what I just read right there, you are worthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not anything of yourself, though. No. It was the, well, it was the what actual Jesus did. grace yeah. of God. Right. It, it makes us, I like to say this, it makes us one with God, it makes us tight. Mm -hmm. but it, and, it, and it's just plain, he says, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Mm -hmm. in, in Him. Him. But being in Him, because I am in Christ, then I'm, according to to, to, to Bible, I'm in right standing with God. So these people, did, and I used to think this, mm -hmm. that, well, God won't do this for me because I did such and such and such and such. Folks, that's, that's just not true. Yeah. If you're born again, if, you, if you've asked God to <clears throat> forgive you, then that's all gone. You know, the, there was a, a singer years ago, his name was David Ingalls, mm -hmm. And he's saying a lot of these verses, yes, you know, did. like one of them was, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. And then it said, a brand new creation in him. Old things are passed away and everything is new. And then it goes on, I am the righteousness mm -hmm. of God. But one, And part of that he talks about being a partaker of his divine nature. nature. Okay, now see, that, that, that's very helpful to me because when I begin to understand, okay, I'm a partaker of his divine nature, not because of anything I've done. It's because of what Jesus has done. Right. It's because Jesus was willing to come into this place, you know, and we just celebrated, you know, his entry into the earth at Christmas time when we talked about the mighty rescue that was planned, you know, and he sat there that day and you could just imagine how he just said, hey, I'll go. I'll do this. I'll, I'll go there, you know, and he did. And he took upon himself all the sin, sickness, and everything, everything bad. That's right. And, you know, the Bible talks about him in Isaiah 53 or 55 where it describes him as he was on that cross. You couldn't even tell he was a person anymore. That's right. They it said that his that. visage, his face was so marred, he, he didn't even look human. And he did that for you. He did that for me. Right. And that's why we could say we're the righteousness of God in Him. Yeah. Not, we didn't do anything. He did it all. He did it all. And He just gave us the benefit of what He did. That's right. So we need to boldly understand, hey, I'm not, I'm not a worm of the earth anymore. No, no. that's right. I'm righteous with right. God. No, that's right. Right that's with right. God. Okay, let's talk about this one for just the okay. bit of time we have left. Confessing the Word. Oh, yeah. Confessing the Word. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. salvation. In other words, the way that you get into the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. the way you get in, okay, to it, had to do with it has to do with what you believe in your heart mm -hmm. and what you say with your mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, everything in the kingdom works that way. Mm -hmm. So you, the, the, what you say is important. It is very you, important. What, and, and see, here's the thing about it. Whatever you believe in your heart. Whatever. Whatever you believe in your heart. Yeah. And say with your mouth. Will come to pass. Mm -hmm. And that what it says. That is what it says. It says, if you confess with your mouth, if you say Jesus mm -hmm. is the Christ and you believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. salvation. So everything in the kingdom works on that principle. I mean, in the very beginning, the Bible says, and God said, mm -hmm. light be. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to talk about this where it says at the end of it, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Uh -huh. And then we define salvation is, you know, it's a whole list of things uh, about being, how does it start? Saved, saved, saved healed, healed, delivered, delivered set, set free, free and prospered, made and made whole. Okay, all of those things, confession is made 
unto being saved, healed, delivered, set free, and made whole. So that's right. See, here's the thing about it. What we need, when we're talking about confessing the word, we need to begin to say about ourselves mm -hmm. what the Bible says about us. Yeah. Like we talked in, uh, a minute ago about mm -hmm. righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. In Christ. I can do all things through him who loved me. Yeah. I have the mind of Christ. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all we, we I'm need, more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror through him who loved me. We need to, we need to begin to say about ourselves what the Bible says about us. Mm -hmm. See, and that goes back. I mean, you, you, it all goes back to faith. It does. It always goes back to that. So, you know, yeah. you, you just have to believe. Well, so, you know, people say, well, I just, don't, I just don't feel it. It doesn't make any difference what you feel like. That's right, because we just read that a while ago about the kingdom of God is not meat and drink uh -huh. or what you feel. You could add that in there, but it's about righteousness, peace, and joy. Right. You know, I remember when I was a little boy growing up, my mama did something. And I, you know, at the time, I'm probably, I probably wasn't real wild about this. Mm -hmm. But I remember that if you were sick, yeah. you still had to get up every day and put your clothes on. Yeah. I remember you telling me that. And I, I mean, I know like your mama would, you would lay We around, went to bed. You'd lay around in bed. Yeah. They'd bring you breakfast in bed and lunch in bed. Yeah, and, that's right. But, but I don't, there was just something about that you had to get up and put your clothes on. Yeah. That kind of yeah. made you want to keep going. Yeah, it does. It really does. Right. So as we're here talking about the fundamentals, it's, it, it's the fundamentals that cause you and I to be successful mm -hmm. in whatever we undertake. Yeah, that's right. And we've, we've talked about the fundamentals of Christianity. And, and it's just something that you, that you need to do every day. Because it's fundamental. Right. Well, Susan, I want to thank you for allowing us to be a part of your week. If you have prayer requests, you can contact us here. Consider partnering with us at, at the bottom line. We would appreciate it. Remember this. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you should know the, the truth. truth. And, and the, the truth, truth will set, set you, you free. free.